five, four, three, two, and we're live with D Green with Amy. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to D Green with Amy. I'm Amy. After adopting a whole food plant based lifestyle, my hubby Rick and I lost over 130 pounds. Now I coach others on their plant based journey. Just test voice. Let's welcome our guest. Author of the award-winning book, The Plan A Diet, combining whole food plant-based nutrition with the timeless wisdom of scripture. Sid Notter hosts a monthly inflammation support group for the plant-based nutrition support group, pbnsg.org. Please click like to help be green with Amy. Welcome, Sid Notter. Greetings, green warriors, and welcome back, Sid. Thank you. You know what? This is my sixth appearance here. I was looking. Oh, Thank oh. you so much for having me on. I'm glad you mentioned that. Green Warriors, we have past uh, broadcasts from Sid that you can look for. She's done so many wonderful presentations and given us so much valuable information. And today we are so thrilled to have Sid Nada returning. And she's going to guide us through a topic that hits close to home for many of us, navigating the world of dining out on a whole food plant-based diet. And Sid, it's so nice to have you back. You're going to be sharing your wealth of knowledge with our community. And, you know, as Green Warriors committed to a whole food plant-based lifestyle, we're, we often face challenges when it comes to finding whole food plant-based options at restaurants. And today, Sid's going to be sharing invaluable insights and tips on how to dine out while staying true to our plant-powered principles. So, Green Warriors, if you have questions, type them in the comments. We're going to be giving those to Sid a little bit later on in the broadcast. But for now, just get ready because you're going to have a conversation filled with practical advice and personal experiences. And we hope that you'll share some of your personal experiences in the comments as well. And now we're going to delve into tips to eat out on a whole food plant-based diet. And we usually start off with a true or false game, but we're going to wait a little bit and we're going to start, start off with that in just a little bit. But Sid's going to start and just dive right into her presentation, okay? Okay, sounds good. So this is one of the biggest hurdles that people face when they switch to whole food plant-based eating is how to eat out, right? There's usually nothing compliant in the restaurants that we go to. But finding restaurants that do serve these meals without added oils, which I said can be very tricky, but there are ways that we can navigate this. So the Happy Cow, that's a website that can be helpful in locating veg vegetarian and vegan restaurants. But we have to be aware in those restaurants, too, because a lot of their foods contain hidden oils and animal products as well. So with a little awareness, though, and, um, you know, a little pre-planning on our part, we can stay true to our lifestyle while we are uh, trying to eat out. I just read a stat too that 50% of today's food dollars are spent at restaurants, which I found shocking to know that that meant no wonder there are places everywhere you go, every street is lined with restaurants and fast food places. And I've often wondered how do these places all stay afloat? Well, now I know because 50% of everybody's food budget is going to restaurants. So let me get going here on how to eat out. Oops, what happened there? Can you see my slide, Amy? I can see the top part of it, but it kind of got cut off. I yeah, thought. so what's going on there? Is this yeah. better? Let's see. Oh, I think you fixed it. Okay, good. <laughs> So ethnic restaurants are often your best options, like Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Mexican, Italian restaurants, other cuisines, but even a steakhouse. You can find things even at a steakhouse that offers baked potatoes or sweet potatoes or steamed veggies and rice and salads, and sometimes added beans for protein if they have whole beans there. So it's up to you to become a super sleuth detective when it comes to reading a menu. 
as most menus include appetizers and side dishes and main entrees, which you can scan for the healthy foods and create your own plate. But there's a few things you should know up front before you even get to the menu. First, be prepared to carry your own oil-free dressing with you in a little container in your purse or your pocket. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Unless you're a fan of plain vinegar, usually you, you can get a balsamic vinegar or maybe lemon juice at the restaurant, which many people do that. But if you want to have your own dressing in a tiny container, you can get those little containers everywhere. And I use those all the time. So this might be a good time for our true false question, Amy, our first one. Okay, great. Well, we'll start off our game. It's time for true or false on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below. And Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, Green Warriors, type in your guess. True or false, side dishes can only be found on the sides portion of the menu. Type in your guess and go ahead, Sid, tell us about that. Okay, the answer to that is, what do you think it is, Amy? Well, I'm going to have to say false. <laughs> <laughs> that is right, it's false. That's like a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me get to that part. So let's, uh, if you know in advance, which, Let's slip ahead. We're going to answer that question with the next slide. But if you know in advance which restaurant you're going to be going to, check the menu online before you arrive. Because look for any vegetable-based dishes that can be, be prepared by steaming or baking. And here's where your detective skills uh, kick in. You have to scan the entire menu. I call that STEM. Scan the entire menu. And don't overlook the side dishes that are listed with the meat and fish entrees. That's where you're going to find some things that you're not going to find in the side dish menu. For example, uh, you might see asparagus spears or mushrooms or sometimes salsa listed with some of the chicken dishes or those fish dishes. But you won't see asparagus under the side dish. So you have to look at the entire menu to get an idea of what the whole, the whole picture is for side dishes. So let's see here. So here's an example. I don't know if you can read this. It might be coming across too small uh, on the slideshow. I'm not quite sure. But in this menu here, we see that um, pineapple salsa that might be compliant, right? Might not have any oil in it. They have that. They have baked potatoes, and that's a good start. And if they can make that garden salad, you know, we're all set. Now we've got a salad and maybe a potato with some pineapple salsa on it. Well, you can also call the restaurant ahead of time. In fact, I, I highly recommend this. Ask the chef to make something for you, a plant-based, vegan, no added oil meal, and be very specific with your request that you don't want any sauces with butter or sour cream being inadvertently added because sometimes they don't totally understand what we're asking for. Sometimes if we just say no dairy, it doesn't fully resonate with them when it comes to the sour cream or the Parmesan cheese. So you have to be very specific and don't be shy about this because restaurants often accommodate allergies and other dietary requests. And I think chefs sometimes actually appreciate the challenge because I've seen some of them go out of their way to, in, to create these incredible dishes. Um, one fellow that I know, he has all of his requests printed on a card, which he hands to the waitress to give to the chef to avoid any misunderstanding. So, uh, yeah, if you are in a situation where you could not plan ahead, let's go to that. Um, and you find yourself sitting in a restaurant because the group of people that you're with, you know, they all wanted to go to this restaurant. So there you are. Again, scan the appetizers, the side dishes, and the main entrees. Um, if you see a rice potato and bean or a pasta dish, you could maybe ask for that without any animal products in it or ask for those animal products to be replaced. For example, if they have a chicken and rice dish, could they replace the chicken with perhaps some whole beans or some steamed vegetables? And maybe under the side dishes, they have a baked potato and some steamed asparagus or a, a garden salad. So the, the real key is to look at the entire menu and don't just look for a, a vegan plant-based burger. You know, we have to be a little bit creative here. 
Okay, so let's do another question, Amy. Okay, sounds good. All right, <laughs> so our next question is, oh, we just had that one. Okay, true or false, Green Warriors, restaurants typically prepare food using low-fat methods of cooking. True or false? Okay, Green Warriors, what's your guess? Okay, Sid, go ahead. That is definitely false. <laughs> restaurants do not use low fat methods of cooking at all. In fact, that's why we need to specify the prep method. Because as mentioned earlier, restaurants are notorious for adding large amounts of oils plus butters and salts and sugars to their food. So fresh and raw items would be ideal, but for cooked foods, ask for your food to be either baked or steamed or grilled on a dry skillet or water sauteed even. Ask for your sauces to be put on the side, you know, if you, and if you forgot your salad dressing, maybe you could ask for lemons or limes or vinegars or salsas. So remember to be extra polite to your server while explaining. I know you would be, but sometimes um, when we offer suggestions, they, they may not understand because they probably don't get a lot of requests like we're going to be giving them. So if you're met with any resistance, um, you might want to explain that you eat this way for health reasons, because that is definitely true, right? That's not false. Or I don't do this, but some people use the allergy card, you know, and if they're comfortable doing that. So, um, you know, if I eat one drop of oil, you're going to have to call the emergency squad, you know, just something because <laughs> I'm going to go into shock, you know, from an allergy. So I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I just want them to accommodate me, you know, as is. But you're the customer after all. If they still won't accommodate you at that point, find a different restaurant, right? I mean, they, you are the customer and it's not worth eating unhealthy foods just because they can't work with you or they won't. All right. So, yeah, don't be afraid to find a different restaurant if they're not willing to work with you. And of course, if you're with a big group, then you might be stuck. But um, now this is kind of old because Sweet Tomatoes is, is no longer in business that I'm aware of. But uh, these are some ideas for specific restaurants that we've always had good luck at. And Sweet Tomatoes was one of our favorites. Oh, how I wish they would come back or maybe there are similar restaurants to them that I'm just not aware of. But you could load up on the best all-you-could-eat salad bar with beans and fat-free dressings and baked potatoes and vegan soups and all, you know, for about 10 bucks, as much as you wanted to eat. But yeah, the one in our area closed many years ago. But And when we traveled, we would seek these out. But I don't, I'm pretty sure they're all closed. Do you ever, did you ever eat there, Amy? At oh, Tomatoes? it was my favorite place yeah. to eat. Oh, they just had so many things to offer. They really yeah. did. And yeah, absolutely. But there are, I have found sometimes some grocery stores have salad bars that they had had closed down for a while, but they're beginning to open them up. So, and then I, I don't know, well, I'm not near Whole Foods, but I think I've seen one there, but I'm not sure if they still have them open. Maybe mm -hmm. the Greek Warriors can type in if they have a restaurant that has a salad bar near them, what the name of it is, and that might help some people that are watching. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Whole Foods, yeah, I remember they, they had a sticker for the ones that were oil-free. They had a, a sticker for the dishes that were oil-free. And unfortunately, the Whole Foods near us does not serve very many oil-free options, but you could get a salad, you know, you could get a raw salad. Yeah. If you. All right, so let's look okay. at Mexican restaurants next. Oh, I'm sorry, were people talking? Oh, I thought, I thought that we had a comment, and we do. Uh, Diana Varner said, hello, everyone. This is a great topic. I love to modify my order to fit my needs. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. And I just wanted to give that, that so that uh, Sid could see that. Go ahead, Sid. Yeah, thank you. So Mexican restaurants, when it comes to the chips and salsa, you know, we got to forget those chips. They're swimming in oil. So send those back to the kitchen so you're not tempted to eat them. Ask for soft corn tortillas instead, or if you plan ahead, you can make your own tortilla chips at home and bring those along, right? Either way, you have a good appetizer. So this might be a good time for the true-false. Okay. And another true-false. True or false, Green Warriors, choosing whole beans at a Mexican restaurant would be acceptable. 
True or false? Okay, Sid, go ahead. Well, it's true, and I kind of messed that up because the answer is right there on the slide, that you want whole beans, not refried beans, right? When they refry beans, they usually use lard or some type of fat. So if you look at the menu in a re Mexican restaurant for different beans, rice, and vegetable options, um, my understanding is they typically start the day with whole beans before they fry them in oil or lard or pig fat. Um, they, that might not be true now, but this was true, you know, a few years ago. I'm not sure how they do it now. But ask if they have any whole beans on hand, because sometimes they do, especially pinto beans or black beans, which are left whole. Then ask about the veggies. Are they grilled? Um, could they prepare your veggies on a dry griddle without adding the oil? And then ask what's in the rice, too, because I know that Chipotle coats their rice in oil, which you wouldn't expect. But one time I was at Chipotle, and I don't go there anymore because most everything there is coated in oil, but I thought the rice would be safe. And I asked about the beans. I said, "Are those, do those beans have oil? You know, are they made with oil? She goes, oh, no, but our rice is. And she pulled out this big jug of um, oil from underneath the rice thing. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think that there would be oil in the rice, but there was. And um, so at the restaurant we go to, which is rarely do we go out, but if we do, there's a Mexican place in town where I get a soft corn tortilla with whole beans, lettuce, tomato, salsa, and their rice is okay. So I get the rice. And if they have guacamole that's compliant, watch out because some of the guacs have sour cream. You know, you have to ask if what's in there. And they will make that for me. No cheese, no sour cream. And I, you know, again, I know that some people who tell their waiters they're allergic to dairy and oils, they do it that way. But I just call ahead and ask them what they can make for me. And they're usually really happy to accommodate me. Again, don't forget about the guac and the side things, because if you're striving to reverse a chronic condition or lose weight, if you're on some type of weight loss program or retain your weight, these are questions that we need to be asking because they put a lot of hidden fats in restaurant foods. The next one, oh my gosh, okay. I need to be um, cueing myself to move the slide. Okay, let's look at Italian restaurants because sometimes they offer whole wheat or whole grain pasta or gluten-free pasta, which is made from rice flour. Top that with a marinara, but be careful because marinaras can have oil and dairy, so you have to ask about it. And then get a topper of basil or garlic or tomatoes or steamed veggies. You could add white beans or chickpeas if they have those on hand. And of course, forego the Parmesan. Ask, ask if they have a whole grain bread too. Sometimes you can make a great salad at an Italian restaurant and then scan the entire menu for um, the side dishes that we just talked about and investigate their minestrone soup, but watch out because those are usually made with chicken broth or beef broth. You know, they usually don't use vegetable broth in their minestrone and it probably has oil. So here are a few um, examples. This is a, an Italian restaurant menu. And from the top down there, we see a caprese salad. So we, we hold the cheese on that, but we add in those market vegetables that are shown down with the chicken, right? So this is where we become a super sleuth and get a little creative. The minestrone soup might be a possibility. The fettuccine might work, but what's in that red sauce, you know, the house red sauce, what is that all about? Because usually, um, you know, it has oil in it, but the pesto also usually has oil. So we have to be careful of that. And then what about the gnocchi there? Gnocchi are made with potato starch. They're little like dumplings. That's shown with the chicken. And so um, those could be topped. Could they make just gnocchi with a plain marinara? Or could a pasta dish be topped with the mushrooms that are showing up under the chicken? They have a mushroom uh, entree or option there. And then under the salmon, I see they have fingerling potatoes and asparagus. So could you get the potatoes just served plain or spiced up or the asparagus? Could they just steam that for you? So I hope you're beginning to see some of the possibilities that open up when we explore the whole menu and just don't look at the title of, you know, if you see something that sh says shrimp or chicken, just don't scan over that. Look what comes with it, because sometimes that's where you find these little golden nuggets of things that we could possibly eat. 
All right, let's go on to Chinese, which again, the restaurants may be willing to create an oil-free stir fry, which could have tofu, rice, noodles, uh, the veggie, steamed veggies, and a low sodium soy sauce, perhaps. And you may even want to order your soy sauce on the side or anything on the side, but make sure you avoid the oyster sauce, of course. Ask about the vegetarian soup, the noodle soup, and the miso soup as well. The miso soup, if, if it's oil free, would be compliant. So the Chinese restaurant in our neighborhood makes a vegan sushi called futomaki, and it's real. It's compliant. It's a raw sushi with just veggies. It's d delicious. So we sometimes we get that, but really we rarely eat out. I mean, rarely. <laughs> when I say rarely, but Chinese food again is typically coated in oil. But they'll often work with you if you request it. Okay, how about a true false? All right, that sounds great. Get ready, Green Warriors. True or false, Thai restaurants usually use coconut milk in place of dairy. Mm, true or false? Okay, Sid, tell us the answer. The answer to that is true, actually. Thai restaurants are good because they cook their food to order, typically. It's not all sitting back there, you know. They usually make their things to order, so you can order food the way you like it. So don't be shy about insisting on no added oil because Thai places usually don't use dairy. They use the coconut milk quite often, especially in their curry dishes, which is, you know, re remember that coconut milk is very high in saturated fat. It can raise your cholesterol. So keep that in mind. If you're struggling with those issues, you may want to avoid coconut milk if that's the case. But your server can often check with the kitchen to find out which dishes are best suited to make oil free. Spring rolls, veggie rolls, look, look at the appetizers. You'll find some things there typically. These can be served hot or cold or made with fresh veggies or sprouts or herbs or sometimes tofu, or they're wrapped in that thin rice paper wrap. Sometimes they're served with a sauce too. Of course, you'd wanna find out about the sauce or maybe you could find lettuce leaf wraps or ask them to wrap it in a lettuce leaf, you know, if there's something questionable about what they're wrapping it in. Um, then, uh, then into that lettuce leaf, you could also pile up um, mints or pe mint spice, uh, peanuts, onions, chopped lime, coconut, and tofu, you know, chopped tofu. All of those could come to you in separate bowls, and you could make your own little plate if they're willing to do that for you, and most times they are. And then you might even find one or two soups at a Thai place, hot and sour vegetable or clear vegetable, which are usually no oil, but do ask. And most salads are healthy in these places, too, until they add the dressing. So if you didn't bring your own dressing, you could ask for a bit of lime juice or maybe lemon juice. So when checking out the main dishes, make sure you look at the vegetarian section first and then check out the other sections to find out the, the uh, dishes that are made with rice noodles, for example. Um, if you find something that looks healthy there, but it contains beef or chicken or seafood, Again, just ask if they could make that dish without the animal product, because tofu is usually available as a substitute in most Chinese and Thai restaurants. Ask for the tofu to be steamed or cooked on a dry get, a dry griddle. Um, vegetarian pad thai is an option if they can, if it's compliant. Um, restaurants vary how they prepare these things, but that is uh, rice noodles, tofu scallions and bean sprouts you know so that would be a good dish other noodle dishes could be made with any combination of basil leaves um, onion tomato bell peppers carrots broccoli mushrooms bamboo shoots bean sprouts so they have a whole lot of things back there that are raw that you could create your own wrap with ask them tell them what you're looking for and maybe they'll have good suggestions for you and then maybe there's a mild or medium or spicy sauce available that doesn't have oil or animal products in it. But be sure they don't put fish sauce in there, which sometimes they do, or eggs, because they do use eggs as well. So you just have to be cautious of what you know they're serving. Steamed white rice is a staple in Thai dining, and it's usually cooked without oil. But ask them if they have brown rice. Maybe they do. But if not, you know, Dr. McDougall says that you're probably not going to die if you eat white rice once in a while. So, you know, use your judgment there if that's the only thing you can get there and it doesn't have oil in it. 
that's a personal call on your part. All right, how about uh, pizza? Let's see, pizza, if you can get a whole wheat crust with pizza sauce that's compliant, watch out for that. Hopefully it, it doesn't have oil or a dairy in it, some do. Skip the cheese and load up on those veggies. And again, ask, 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 because some pizza sauces do contain things we don't wanna eat. Subway, you could get a, a salad there or you could order a sub on whole grain bread if possible, piled high with veggies and mustard or vinegar dressing. Uh, many shops offer different varieties of salad offer, offerings, but have your dressing on hand as usual. Panera Bread, I haven't been there in a few years, but they, I'm not sure if they still make this. They used to, a Mediterranean sandwich on whole grain bread Upon request, again, omit the cheese, ask for extra veggies and greens, and side salads are also available there. So as we recap here, look at the menu online ahead of time so that when you get in there, you kind of know what you're gonna ask, right? Instead of, especially if you're with a group of people and they're all looking at you like, what is with her? You know, she's asking <laughs> so many questions. Call ahead, tell them your dietary needs and ask what they can prepare for you ahead of time. And in general, look for potatoes, rice, beans, uh, salads, portobello mushrooms, pasta, healthy side dishes, and always ask about those hidden oils, animal products, and ask for your food to be steamed, yeah, baked or grilled over a dry skillet. So it's, you know, again, without the added fats. Be kind to your server and have patience because um, I know you will, but you know, I, I saw Dr. Ornish point this out one time and I thought it was a good reminder that sometimes we might get a little frustrated when they don't act like they they care or that they don't understand us. <laughs> so Dr. Ornish puts it this way. Um, ask if your menu items can be prepared differently. Politely ask the chef, could they saute the veggies using vegetable stock? Or you could say it this way. This is Dr. Ornish's quote. Could I ask the chef to please saute some mushrooms and chopped tomatoes with garlic and vegetable stock to serve over my pasta? And then once your order is taken, kindly ask the server to repeat it back to you to make sure they understand what you're ordering. And then everyone wants the dining experience to go well. But you know, again, if they cannot or will not accommodate you, go somewhere else, right? Don't spend your hard earned money on foods that you don't want or are gonna leave you feeling guilty or bloated. There are plenty of places that will gladly serve you. So that's the slideshow. I've got a little more thing to read. I'm going to, oh, can you stop? Yeah, you stop the slides, Randy. Okay, yes. thank you. But I'm reading this book right now, which I thought would be interesting to talk about. But first of all, Amy, do you guys eat out or what do you do? Well, I am so fortunate because my husband, Rick, he cooks so much delicious food for us. It's kind of like his hobby. He just loves cooking. And there's usually just the two of us at home. But he's oftentimes in the kitchen and he'll will freeze things because he's constantly cooking and just loves to invent new recipes or change recipes around. And oftentimes when we eat, we'll look at each other and say, I'd eat this in a restaurant. So it's kind of tricky to find a restaurant that uh, would be delicious, but I definitely can find compliant food in restaurants. But we don't, because of that, we just don't eat out as often because, you know, Rick just loves to cook. Now, if if I'm not somebody that loves to cook, although I am the salad maker of the house. So I will make, I will batch make, I just did that today before the broadcast, actually. I made up 10 separate salads so that we would have for five days, we would have every day, just pull that salad out. And these are salads because when you eat this way and you eat a salad, somebody's supposed to look at the salad and say, are you going to eat all that? So is that just for you? <laughs> And, and oftentimes, if I'll have company over for dinner, I'll take one of those salads and put it out. And four or five people will, will take servings from it. Sometimes we'll still have salad left over. But so that's what I do. I, that's my cooking. But for people that are very busy or they're working full time out of the home and, and they and they, they're, or they just have a big social life, there's a lot of reasons why people do need to navigate these restaurants. 
we really don't want to be sidetracked. And that's why I was so glad that you did that. So I did, I was a fan of sweet tomatoes. Um, mm -hmm. So oftentimes Indian restaurants, I, I might go to an Indian restaurant, but I still, you have to explain to them because people don't even usually know what vegan means. And the servers are busy, you know, and they're just trying to, to please. And but sometimes I wind up with a chef, you know, and that that gets excited about me asking them to prepare something different than they've been because they just typically prepare the same foods over and over again. So they don't get to really um, utilize their creativity in, in, in the food preparation. And so that sometimes it, it delights the chefs when I'll have, and I'm not talking about four or five star restaurants. I'm just talking about, you know, family restaurants and, uh, I'll have the server come out and, and I'll have a beautiful salad with like blueberries, all, you know, surrounding the edge of the plate or, you know, and you could tell that this, they could have just thrown the ingredients together, but no, this chef was like, Oh, I finally get to, put a little creativity into this, you know, and, and so they get very excited about that. So yeah, we sometimes do eat out, but more, more often it's uh, the be green with AB restaurant. <laughs> How about you, Sid? Yeah, very rarely, very rarely. We go to the Mexican place once in a while, you know, and I call ahead and order what we're, you know, what we're going to have. But um, in a pinch, we might stop at a Subway and get a salad, you know, if we're starving. But um, very rarely do we eat up, eat out. Yeah, it's too yeah. expensive too. You know, when you get the bill, you're like, "What? I could have made this for a third of that." Yeah. Cost. And, and and I love this lifestyle so much because I love to eat volume eating, and I love to eat a lot of food because it's so um, low in calorie density. So sometimes when I'll order something in a restaurant, I'll have to order maybe more than one entree because I'm, I'm, they're omitting the, the animal products. So now I'm just left with whatever's left on the vegetables. And sometimes a strategy that I'll use is maybe I'll take a baked sweet potato with me. And then like you said, bring your own salad dressing. Sometimes I'll do that just so that I have something to, to put on the plate because I'm paying for this dish that had animal products, but I'm not getting the animal products. So I don't feel bad about adding something that I brought in to, right. to the plate. And, and mostly people don't mention anything about it. And as a matter of fact, one time we had to go to a restaurant that was, it was just a place that we really weren't going to find much anything else but a salad because everything was just deep, deep fried. There's some of these restaurants that they just, that's all they do is serve everything deep fried. But we were fortunate that they had a big salad, which was supposed to come with some kind of seafood on it. And they omitted that. And we, we had used the strategy that you talked about was calling ahead. And so we knew what we were going to order. So we actually at home made our own plant-based sushi. And sushi doesn't mean that there's fish in there. Sushi actually means seasoned rice. That's what the sushi really means. So we would take, we took that, but we always take enough to share. So we took sushi with us, but we took enough to share with everybody who was at the table in case they wanted to know what we were eating. And, and we also took a dressing with us as well. And they all, they all love what we had. They still imbibed on the fried foods that they were eating, but they still liked to taste what we had. So that was the strategy that I used. Cool. Yeah. I never thought about bringing my own uh, sushi. That's interesting. Yeah, because it's um, it's it's kind of portable, right? And just kind of mm -hmm. put it on the plate there. And, and uh, I, I want to look and see what some of our uh, Green Warriors had said. Uh, hi, Diana. She said, I like to take carrot chips in place of chips. That's a good idea. I like that. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's a good idea. I love I love when the Green Warriors share their their uh, strategies with us because we all just can learn from each other. And let's see, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. She said Whole Foods definitely doesn't have a lot of oil free options. Yeah, that is sad. You're right, Nikki. Yeah. So, and let's see. Oh, and you were talking about the uh, bacon fat. Joyce said Texas House soaks their sweet potatoes in bacon fat. So I asked about the white potatoes. And she said they soak them too. So be careful of that place. That That's true. I'm, I'm glad that you told, I wouldn't have even known that because it oftentimes those steakhouses are a really great resource 
to get those side dishes. So that's really good to know. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Oh, and hi, thanks. She said, or I shouldn't say she, I'm not sure. I always look for an unsalted baked potato without butter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great strategy. One time I ordered that and it, and it came it wrapped in aluminum foil and I unwrapped it and there was uh, like kosher salt coating the whole outside of it. Mm. So I usually like to eat the skins of the sweet potato or the baked potato, but this time I did not. But yeah, I, I think the longer that you're on this lifestyle too, you forget that mm -hmm. they, that they do things like, like if I go to a restaurant, I might order a salad and then it comes and I, and I tell them, you know, not to do, you know, put the dressing on the side. I don't even say don't bring the dressing. I just say, put the dressing on the side and then I just don't use it. And then this way there's less confusion, but sometimes I'll get a salad and it'll be covered with cheese, mm -hmm. you know, or it'll have croutons all over it, which are mm -hmm. made with oil. And I forget, I was, oh yeah, that's right. That's what people do. And it's been so long that I ate that way that I would forget. So we really kind of have to think about those things sometimes. Mm -hmm. and oh, and uh, Susan. Hi, Susan. She has a question. Can you recommend an app to local whole food plant-based friendly restaurants? Oh, there's Happy Cow. I know there's other ones. I, I'm sorry. I can't think of them off the top of my head. I don't use them, so I'm not familiar do you know of any, Amy? Or well, what I'll do is I'm going to share it in the in the comments. It's not an app, though, but I do um, have there. There's something I don't know if people are familiar with the plant pure communities. Well, now now it's all been with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine is now taking over the the pod network, and mm -hmm. so this is exciting things that are happening over there, and they have a they had a website which you could have a map and you could find restaurants that had served food without oil in and you could just search by zip code and you could also on the same map you can search for groups that are called pods that uh meet and they have this have adopted this lifestyle so it's kind of like meet up in a way and it's free and you can type in your zip code and see if there's one of those groups that have that. And oftentimes they have potluck dinners. And so they share the, the whole food plant-based, no oil food. So, mm -hmm. so I, I put a link in, in the comments for everybody. If you wanted to look and see, there's a link to that website, but now mm -hmm. uh, the, the plant pure communities, if you ever saw, there was a movie that that was uh, made there, and it, and it was the son of T. Colin Campbell who made uh, Plant Pure Nation, and so he had a call to action at the end of the movie for everybody to go out and join or or create a pod, which is I did that, and it was under their under their website that we did it. But now, uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has taken that Plant Pure uh, Pod Network over. And it's going to be under their wing. So, but still for now, that website is available as far as I know for you to find the restaurants or a pod, which means a group of people that also uh, share this lifestyle with each other. So I hope that that was helpful. Happy cow. I think that that's a great thing too. And, uh, but I don't, but that would be, if anybody's an app maker out there, I bet you would do very well because <laughs> we, we really need things like that to yeah. uh, help us find those restaurants. I just came across a place called Whole Harvest too, which is, you know, they ship it to you. They ship meals to you, which are whole food, plant-based, no oil, no oil in any of their entrees. And um, so I just signed up with them. I'm good. I've tried it. I've, you know, I think they're uh, good for the value. And if you are interested in that, if you put SID30 as the code, you get $30 off. But I'm not trying to promote that here. But yeah, well, that's helpful. That's helpful because um, sometimes people eat out not because that they they are socializing. Sometimes they just they don't have time to cook. They didn't have time to shop. And and having yeah. this on hand as an option, or you yeah. know, or sometimes you're not feeling well, and so having that on option 
as an option is a really great thing for us. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. And this yeah, is- Yeah, I'll this be writing a review. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Writing a review, go ahead. I'll be writing a review about their food soon. In fact, we're getting ready to travel on the road and I've ordered those to take along in the cooler so that you know we have some foods for the microwave when we stop at a hotel or I'm cooking as well, but those those will come in handy as additions because there's no oil in any of the food. The two co-founders of the of that company are both uh, two men separately who have had heart attacks, you know, and they decided when they reversed their disease through this lifestyle and they got together and decided they need to make a place where people can order whole food, plant-based, no oil foods. And it comes, um, it's shipped in on ice, you know, it's not frozen, but it's shipped cold. You get it in two days. So I'm, I think that's a good thing for people that don't want to cook as well, you know, yeah. and that's why maybe they're eating out because they just want the convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So can you say the name of it again? It's Whole Harvest. Okay. Yeah. Whole Harvest. Dot com. Yeah. Oh, excellent. I'm going to put that in the show notes too. And then yeah. and it's the, the discount code is SID. SID30 gets $30 off the first order. Okay. And there's That's no subscription where you got to sign up for time and again. It's, you know, one time and out and then you reorder if you want to. Oh, I well think that's... it's eight, eight meals are the minimum. You have to order at least eight, which you'd want to do to get the shipping because the shipping is either 12 something. Dep it depends on where you are from where they, where they ship from. Okay. Well, that's good. So have you tried any of them yet? I've tried one so far. I've got some here, but um, I tried the lasagna. It was very good. So, um, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff in the fridge already made, so I haven't been eating the frozen stuff yet. Yeah, yeah. You can freeze it. You know, when you get it, you can freeze it. But it lasts, I think, seven days or so, seven days in the fridge if you were just to not freeze it. But I'm going to be freezing. I think if you order eight or more, you're probably going to want to freeze some of them. Yeah. But maybe not if you're in a big household, you know, and everybody eats this way. Yeah, that would that would make a a very good backup because you know we 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 often freeze a lot of our food. I use the super cubes. Have you ever used the super cubes? I've seen those. No, I haven't. Where you freeze the soups and cubes or fuse? Yes, soup, right. You yeah. freeze it. Yeah, yeah. they, like they are them. just. I just can't recommend them highly more highly than I have in the past because they're still, they're made of silicone and they, they look like an ice cube tray, but it's, it's a bigger capacity. So they uh, will hold some of the, it's, you can buy different sizes. I buy the one that holds two cups, but, but you can put half and only make a one cup serving and it's a rectangular and you'll get four openings in there. And you just can pour soup in there, even if it's hot because it's silicone. So it'll take the hot temperature. You don't have to to uh, let it uh, thaw out or, or cool or whatever. And we and then you just freeze it. And then when you're done, when it's frozen, you take off the lid and you push it from the bottom, and it pops out into these rectangular cubes. And I have a few of these. I actually have four of them. I started off with two and then I got two more. But you can, if you had a gallon Ziploc bag, you could fit eight of these cubes in that Ziploc bag and then label it, you know, chili or soup or whatever it is that you made. And then if, whenever you were ready to have some food, go to the freezer, take however many of those you want and put it, put one inside of a bowl in the microwave or heat it on the stovetop. And there you have your food that, and it just, I, I find that things that are have corners and straight edges, they take up less space in the refrigerator, the freezer, because the, the rounded edges kind of hog up a lot of real estate. So mm -hmm. that's what I love to use. And my freezer has is filled with super cubes already popped out and, and put in the, the Ziploc bags. <laughs> I even, I, I love to have uh, mushrooms, sauteed mushrooms. And so when I do with the mushrooms is I also make a batch cooked mushrooms. And when we go shopping, we have like pounds and pounds of mushrooms that we buy and we cook them without oil. I made a video about that on my YouTube channel. 
and then we uh, drain, we put put them in the colander when they're done to, to get out the liquid, and then I'll just put in those mushrooms in the super cubes, and now I have mushrooms, and that's one of the things I like to put on my salads, mm. is these one cup of each salad will get a cup of mushrooms, because mushrooms are so good for you. And uh, so, so that's just a wonderful way to have that those things on hand. Or, you know, if, if there's just a time, like you said, what we do, another thing I like to do is just make, make kind of a feel good soup, you know, that, that you would want to eat if you weren't feeling well and didn't, you know, feel well enough to cook. And then this way we have that on hand too. If anybody's not feeling well, you can just have a little soup, uh, not, you know, to, to give you a little warm tummy. That doesn't happen too often, fortunately, I think because of this lifestyle that we, uh, we don't often uh, get ill, so that's kind of nice too. But yeah, I definitely recommend that to uh, help you out with the batch cooking and sharing the the good food. One of our daughters likes to travel from out of town, and she'll often take some of those <laughs> cubes back with her. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she can take it on an airplane because they're frozen. So mm -hmm. she'll take them back with her so that she can have something on hand to uh to use let me just see i think we had some more comments if anybody has some tips to share with us we would love to see uh what you what you have to share and yeah i've got see. something to share if when if oh, everybody sure. else has commented yeah. already yeah go ahead okay so i'm reading this book called the end of overeating by david kessler i don't know if you've heard about it he's a fda a commissioner, a former FDA commissioner. He led the battle against the tobacco industry. And now he's talking about the food industry and what goes on in restaurants and in fast food places. So I've only read the first couple uh, chapters here. So I'm not endorsing the book. I don't know where he's headed with the information, but I found this very interesting about restaurant food since that was what we're talking about today. Yeah. <clears throat> And he states that continued hyper eating, you know, overeating is a biological challenge. It's not a character flaw and it's based on sugar, salt and fat, which we know are the three things that really hijack our brain and get us hooked on food. And especially when they're combined as a trio and all of these palatable foods, he says, stimulate the appetite. And that's why people just can't stop eating. So he's um, he's got this list here of what foods, uh, we'll take a look at the Cheesecake Factory menu, for example. But he talks about how restaurants layer sugar, fat, and salt in layers on something like a core ingredient, like a meat or a potato or a vegetable or bread. And he gives this concept of layering and he, then he gives examples of food layering and I was shocked. A potato skin, he says, a potato is hollowed out. And I guess the skin of a potato is is a great surface area to pick up fat. I guess potato skins are great fat absorbers for some reason. And oftentimes, I didn't know this, but things are pre-fried pre at where they're manufactured and then fried again at the restaurant. Did you know that? I did not know that till I read this. Oh. Like fries, you know, and all these things are pre-fried at the restaurant and then like fried again. I guess so they get probably get a bag of frozen fries that are kind of already pre-fried and then they mm -hmm. probably dump them out into the fryer at the restaurant. Yeah, wow. Right. So he talks about like a potato skin. You know, we have a potato there and then we have bacon bits, sour cream and cheese and salt. So the, then he gives the layer process, fat on fat on fat and salt, you know. <laughs> And then he, he says buffalo wings. Okay, so they start with the fatty part of a chicken, which gets deep fried, and then it's served with creamy or sweet dipping sauce that's heavily salted. And they're pre-fried at the production plant and then fried again at the restaurant. So you've got sugar on salt, on fat, on fat. So he gives the layer sequence for all of these foods. And then he gives, uh, okay, let's look at just... Um, the Cheesecake Factory, because there's a whole bunch of examples here. There's even a, a Starbucks Frappuccino, a white chocolate mocha Frappuccino is coffee diluted with sugar, fat, and salt and optional whipped cream. Well, we all know that. So the Tex-Mex egg rolls at the Cheesecake Factory, here's what it says. Spicy chicken, 
corn, black beans, peppers, onions, and melted cheese served with avocado cream and salsa. And then he goes into his analysis. The avocado alone is high fat, but that's before they've added the mayonnaise and the heavy cream. And then the outer layer is fried with more salt and fat. And then they have the roadside sliders. The dish is layers of fat on sugar, on sugar and salt. You know, he says, oh, it, re it represents a cute little hamburger, but in reality, there's more salt and fat mixed in the meat before they even cook it. And then the sugar and salt is in the caramelized onion and the ketchup. It just, it goes on and on. And he, there's one thing here where the people actually at the factory laugh about it. They called it a UFO, an unidentified fried object. <laughs> 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 it's just an eye-opening thing about the restaurant foods. And at the end, he says, you are the target. He points out in the book, there's no shortage of people who lack control in the face of highly palatable foods, right? Because of the sugar, fat, and salt. And he points out that the food industry has been remarkably successful at designing foods to capture people. Food manufacturers, food designers, and restaurant owners, they may not even fully understand all of the science behind their food, the appeal, the appeal of it. But what they do know is that sugar, fat, and salt sells, right? It sells. So as surely as we're wearing a bullseye on our chest, we are the industry's target. <laughs> anyway, it seems like it's going to be a good book. The, the End of Overeating, Taking Control of the Insatiable American Appetite. That's the name of the book. But again, I'm not endorsing it. I don't know where he's going with it. I just read this in the first couple chapters. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I, I'm trying to, I was trying, as you were reading, and I was so interested, I was trying to remember where I read or heard this, but I think that in nature, I don't think that there is any food that has salt, sweet, and fat combined. I think it's only in in uh, the way people prepare foods. But I, I think that if you went in nature, you could find a fruit that would be sweet. You could find a nut that would be fatty. You could, and of course, there is salt in a lot of different foods that we eat. You know, Swiss chard. There's a lot of salt and, and celery. There's salt in these things. But I don't know that, I think that there isn't a, an instance in nature where you would find all those things combined. And those are the, the three, the trio of things that our brain lights up our, our uh, brain chemistry when we get them because they're kind of rare in nature. And mm -hmm. so imagine taking all three of those things and combining them well, wow, that would really uh, light up your brain. Pleasure center for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it so. does. Yeah, and the restaurants do know about it too. They oh, spend they billions do. of dollars to perfect their like processed food on the shelf in the store. You know, we've we've read that they spend a lot of money to get that product just so, not too much and not too little, but just enough to light up your brain, the bliss point it's called. Yeah, I think that I I read about that. There was another book. That sounds kind of similar to what uh, you're you're reading now. The the book called Salt, Sugar, Fat: How the Food Giants Hooked Us. Have you have you ever read that one? Yeah, by Michael Moss. That's a great yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is a great book, and it's uh, that's been something that I learned a lot from there. And and he, I think he had talked about the the bliss point in that book as well. And just to get that the, the food, not just not just the ingredients, but where they place it on the processed food, like on the potato chip, where they would take make sure that they had more most of the salt on the outer edges of the chip, because that's where the your salt uh, taste buds that are receptive mm. to salt are, and that they the way that they uh, shape the chip and and the size of the chip and how quickly it might melt in your mouth and it's all done very scientifically by these chemists and they then they try it out on people that they uh pay to come in, into their labs or their or their uh corporate headquarters or wherever they may do it and they have them try these foods out and say oh i think that's too salty or too sweet or not sweet enough and then they keep changing the recipe until it comes out to be the bliss point as, as you had uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that we really have to be 
careful about, I think. Yeah. So I, I wanted to talk to everybody today because you, and you've done this in the past. And once again, Sid, this is the, her book, The Plan A Diet. And Sid has generously donated a copy of this for our book giveaway. And all of you are going to have, well, probably up to five chances to try to enter to win this. And I'm going to, I'm going to have that in the show notes and I'm going to put that available to you so that you can uh, try to win this copy of this book and whoever the winner is. And we'll draw for that in a future broadcast. And we're going to uh, draw it live. And then Sid will be sending you a copy of the book. Can you tell us about your book, Sid? Sure. Uh, it came out in 2020. Get my copy here. And it's called The Plan A Diet. It promotes whole food, plant-based eating. You do not have to have a spiritual belief in order to read this book or benefit from them. But if you do happen to be a Christian, there's scriptural support in there and principles which kind of tie in with it. For example, scripture says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. And isn't that what we're talking about today, fitting into restaurant foods or you know, there's just a bunch of principles in there that really help solidify why we need to eat healthier. In fact, it says that uh, anything a person gives into soon becomes his master. Well, we think about that with sugar, fat, and salt, right? If we keep giving into that, that food masters us, right? I, I had that experience myself when I was addicted to mocha lattes a few years ago. I had allowed mocha lattes to become my master. And that verse just reminded me of, 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 about what I was doing because I was ordering decaf coffee, plant milk, and only half the mocha. But before you know it, I was planning my whole shopping routine about when I was going to be at that window to get that drink because I didn't want the line to be long. You know, I went, I better go to this store first and then get my coffee. I mean, I worked that into my routine and it, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I think I've got a problem going on here. So that's when I took steps to correct that. But it was sugar, you know, sugar, think about that. And sugar was the main thing. And I was only getting half the mocha that they usually put in there. So, but that was enough to get me hooked at the time. So yeah, I had allowed mocha lattes to become my master. <laughs> I talk about that in the book. Yeah. I also, and by the way, if, if I, can I talk about the inflammation class then? Amy? Yes, I would love for you to do that. Okay, so I lead an inflammation group for PBNSG, that's Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, but I also taught a course at our local college on that topic. So if you have anything inflammatory going on, and most things do have a component of inflammation involved, there's a course on my website. If you go to sidnotter.com um, and then click the courses tab, you'll see inflammation in your diet. And if you put take off 50 in the code, you'll get 50% off the course. Excellent. That's really good to know. Yeah. All one so, word, no spaces. Take off 50. Take off 50, no spaces. Uh-huh. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And and you and you were just telling me before the broadcast, tell tell our Green Warriors uh, what you just have accomplished, your latest accomplishment. Oh yeah. I just graduated from Dr. Barnard's Food for Life program. And so I had my first Food for Life class last week on Monday the 18th. It was a Zoom class, so if you are interested in my upcoming classes, I think I might do one on brain health shortly after the new year or maybe a, a diabetes initiative. Get on my mailer so you'll be kept up to speed with the classes that are coming up. Just go to sidnatter.com. There's a thing there. Get free 10 dessert smoothies. If you sign up for the smoothies, you'll be on my mailing list. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Oh. And thanks is giving you applause. <laughs> well, everybody, please click like to show your appreciation for what Sid shared with us today. And and you had just already told us how we could find you on social media and all the different courses that, that you're uh, offering. And you have so many wonderful things on your website and the book absolutely excellent i i enjoy reading it i think for for those of you that i i have encountered in, uh sometimes when people ha have uh i i may encounter someone who is christian and they may challenge me because of the lifestyle that i have because they think that the animals are here for us to uh 
to be put on our plate. And so there's so many wonderful scriptures that Sid has put in this book that you could show someone who might be thinking that the Bible was saying certain things to help support one way or another. And, and that could help them to get a better understanding of uh, all the great quotes from the Bible that you share that can help support the lifestyle and help explain it. Well, I just no. want to give you there, a match. Oh, thing. there's Go even ahead. a chapter in there, Amy, that is called addressing objections because of, you know, the objections I've heard over the years as to why plant-based, you know, we're not meant to eat plants. <laughs> yes, we are. So I have a whole chapter just devoted to uh, addressing objections. Yeah, and I think that could be so helpful, even if somebody's not practicing uh, Christianity, but they may encounter people that are. So I think it, it's helpful to a lot of uh, different people. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you a massive thank you, Sid, for sharing your expertise and your practical tips on navigating uh, the dining out world while adhering to a whole food plant-based diet. And Sid, your insights are they're just invaluable and we're so grateful for your time and so happy that you came back and you've been on the show so many times with us and and i really i look forward to having you back soon Sid, can you tell our green warriors what your final take-home message for our green for them about downing out is yeah, I always remind people that life is too short to live the last five, 10 or 20 years of it, dealing with preventable chronic disease and issues, chronic ailments. So the foods you choose today are gonna determine your future health and start today if you're not already eating this way and, and stay true, stay motivated and stay encouraged and know that you can eat out at restaurants with a little bit of effort with pre-planning and awareness. Very nice. Very nicely said. Green Warriors, tell us what you're going to remember about today's broadcast. One of my takeaways is that it might be sour cream in that guacamole. I did not know that. <laughs> and I'm glad you told us about that. I also wanted to thank Jess Tasboy. She did the promos. She is just dynamite out there helping promote this. And she did the voiceovers. And Jess Tasboy, tell us who's coming up next. Ever wondered how to build and maintain strong bones throughout your life? Or what to do after a diagnosis of osteoporosis or osteopenia? Join us for a compelling discussion on osteoporosis with Dr. Scott Harrington, covering crucial aspects like nutrition, calcium intake, and exercise. Don't miss the chance to enhance your understanding of lifelong bone health. Subscribe now and hit that notification bell to be the first to catch this exciting episode on Wednesday, January 3rd, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on Be Green with Amy Live. And to my incredible green warriors, thank you for joining us on this journey. Your commitment to a whole food plant-based lifestyle inspires all of us. Now remember the challenges that we face when we're dining out there are opportunities for growth and learning. And if you found today's episode helpful, please subscribe if you're new and don't forget to share it with your fellow Green Warriors because together we're building a community dedicated to plant-powered living. And as a special thank you, I'm offering you five free recipes. You just go to my website, begreenwithamy.com slash join, and I'll send them to you. Now, everybody, please take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now, squeeze. And that's a hug from me to you and from me to you, Sid, for coming back on the show and giving us so much, so much great information. <laughs> and Green Warriors, if you would like to, to uh, join me and Sid, we're going to be doing my tagline. You can type it in the comments as we sign off. Are you ready, Sid? Ready. Okay, until I see all of you again, remember, be strong, be well, and be green. green. Thank you so much, Sid. Thank you, Green Warriors. Thank you, Amy. I love being on your show. It's always a pleasure. Oh, and I love having you. I hope you'll be back soon. Looking for really tasty recipes that are SOS free? No sugar, oil, or salt. How can it taste good? 
Well, if you like flavor, then you'll love this Be Green with Amy recipe ebook. Get your copy today. Click on the link in the show notes. Be strong, be well, and be green.